the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Today, my beloved, we continue to read chapter 6 from the Gospel of St. John over the next couple of weeks, and we began last week. The Church sets before us this very important chapter. And in this chapter, we see a sequence of events that happens that begins to really reveal the message of God to His people who He was incarnate to save. Last week, we saw how it is that the Lord fed the multitude, now how it is they all came to him and he took the five loaves and the two fish and he fed them. And this was in the beginning of John chapter 6. In this next portion of chapter 6, we see how it is that the Lord departed from them for a little while and they were pursuing him and they were running after him, trying to find him. And then the Lord confronts them by saying something that is of extreme importance. He says to them the following. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. You seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you took something from me. He's telling them you're no longer pursuing me for me. You're no longer making this about how you've identified me as your God and as your Savior. You're coming to me because of the benefits that you receive from knowing me. My beloved, there is an awakening of the conscience that is required for the Christian to be able to come to the realization that in the beginning, in the beginning as children, we might turn to those that we love because they give us what we need, because they give us what pleases us. In the very, very beginning, an infant realizes that they are attached to their mother because the mother supplies them with everything that they need to live, including comfort and love and compassion. But all of those things come from the mother and so then the child naturally turns to his mother in this way. The child grows a little bit older and he begins to realize I will also find protection and security in my father. But eventually, eventually the person is supposed to mature and realize that I must go to them simply for the sake that I love them. Not because I take from them anything. Not because they supply me with anything that I need but rather I go to them because I love them. How many times have we gone into confession and said the words, Abuna, I don't know what to do. I go to pray and I feel nothing. I feel nothing. I feel as if God is not there. I feel as if He doesn't hear me. There is no fire within me. So what does that say about what it is that we are expressing? Since when have I been going to meet the Lord simply because I want to feel something? Tell me, in what other important relationship in your life do you only go to another person if they make you feel something? Let's take the example of a husband and a wife. And this is perfectly fitting because today happens to be Valentine's Day. Should I then turn to my wife and say, I think I'm going to stop coming to you and speaking to you and I think I'm going to stop coming home because I feel nothing? Is the love that I have for the other person dependent on how I feel within me? So what about those days where I in, I'm incapable of feeling nothing? And we all know that we have those days. We all know that we have days where our heart has grown so cold, our anxiety has increased so much, our preoccupation with so many troubles causes us to not be able to feel anything. What if in that day I make the decision to cut off relationships? If my relationships are only built on feelings, then Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy because love is not just a chemical reaction. Love is not simply a feeling and an emotion within us. The church teaches us that love is personified in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That love is very much a choice. That love is offered regardless of the circumstance and regardless of the feeling. And if this is the way that we are willing to live out with integrity, our relationships between us as spouses, as parents to children, as children to their parents. If this is the way that we are willing to live out with integrity our relationships, even among friends, then when will I mature and realize that I must turn to God, not simply for what I receive from Him, but rather I turn to Him because I love Him, even when I feel nothing. 
even when I receive nothing. There is a beautiful saint that is recognized in the Catholic Church who many admire for her sacrifice and for her compassion. This is Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa truly lived a holy and godly life. And she spent the vast, large portion of her life serving the poor and the needy, especially the children in Calcutta. After she had passed away, they discovered that in her own personal journal, she wrote about how it is that she spent half of her life in the ministry, not feeling anything. Half of her life feeling like God was silent, not absent, not that he abandoned her, but he was choosing to be silent. But she continued to give regardless of how she felt. Because love is a choice and this relationship matters so much more than simply going to him only if he chooses to give me. What if the Lord refuses my request the same way he refused St. Paul's? St. Paul says that he had a thorn in the flesh and many believe that it was blindness. The sickness that came upon St. Paul was most probably his eyes growing blind and his eyes would produce a certain pus. And this is why the handkerchiefs, when he would wipe his eyes with them, those handkerchiefs that had the pus that was coming out of his eyes that blinded him, they would heal the sick. And he asked the Lord and he says, I asked him three times, I pleaded with the Lord to heal me. And the Lord's response was what? No. What if St. Paul said, Khalas, if you're not going to give me what I want, and if I'm not benefiting anything from you, then what's the point of worshipping you? What if St. Paul acted as immaturely as I do? Where would the gospel be? Where would the message of salvation be in the world if he acted the way that I act today? Where I turn to God and I tell him, I'm khasmak, khalas, I'm not speaking to you. I'm tired, I'm not getting anything from you. And I only turn to him as if this relationship was transactional. But the Lord tells St. Paul and says what? My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. The Lord is calling us in the reading of the gospel today to not be like these people who only come back to him because they fed him, because he fed them. To only go back to them because they saw him take the five loaves and the two fish and they think to themselves, we will go to him, surely he will feed us again and again. I cannot simply go to the Lord because of what he gives me. This might be acceptable in the beginning as I am growing as his child, but now I have to mature. And now I have to say, Lord, I come to you simply because I love you. I come to you simply because I know that you love me and your grace is sufficient for me, regardless of whether or not you give me what I desire, regardless of whether or not you grant me comfort in my life. Regardless of whether or not I feel anything, Lord, I will stand before you regardless. Because this is my expression of love. The same way that a parent might not feel like cooking dinner for their child. The same way that a mother doesn't want to wake up at 3 a.m. to feed her nursing infant. It has nothing to do with how we feel. It has everything to do with our responsibility of love. I must mature in my love with God. I must stand before Him regardless of how I feel. I must offer to Him even from my poverty and my brokenness. This is the Lord calling us to even deeper and more intimate relationship. The Psalm of today is Psalm 96 and it says, Honor and majesty are before Him. Strength and beauty are in His sanctuary. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised and He is to be feared above all gods. May we learn to praise him in this way and not simply go to him and tell him, give me, give me, give me. Let me exalt his name. Let me praise him and glorify him. Let, let me tell him how much I love him, regardless of how I feel or what I receive. May he grant us to all mature to a state where we no longer only go to him simply to receive, but rather that we desire to offer, even from the little that we have. To him be all glory now and forever, and unto the ages of all ages. Amen.
Oh, 